phi, and we have So we have 0, negative 2, 2, 2, 3, 4, 4, 6. Okay? We're going to make another column because the difference is going to be our rate of change. We're going to find the slope. So with this, just remember, you know, we're just plugging in. We're just plugging in our M and our B value. Here's our M. Here's our B. And once we find that, we have our linear equation. Okay? So looking here, first thing to notice are these in order? They're, they're going up, you know, they're in ascending order, but this, look at, one is missing. We can't see one right here. So because one is missing, what I'm going to focus on is what kind of increments I have between two and four. Because between two and four, those numbers are sequential, right? So we always want to look here. We're going to look here because from zero to two is skipping one, right? We can't tell what the increment is between those two values because, or it's harder to see it, because it goes from 0 to 2. But here it goes from 2 to 3, 3 to 4. So we can do it for from uh, 2 to 3. 2 to 3 is 4 minus 2. 3 to 4 is 6 minus 4. And we get 2. So I know that my slope has to be 2. All right? It's always important to look for the numbers that are sequential because that's telling me I go up 1x, I go up 1 for x, I go up 2 for y. Go up 1 for x, go up 2 for y. That's our slope. Okay? So watch. I already know this. Ooh, nice. Okay? And then this tells me something. Somebody in the chat, tell me what that is. What do we know that that negative 2 must be what? Negative 2 must be what? It's when x is 0. When time is 0, what do you have? Very good, Jacqueline. Very good. This is our initial value. Initial amount, initial value. Right? Because when x is 0, we're on the y-intercept, and that's our initial value. When time is 0, that's how much you start with. Okay? So, let's see. We know our initial value is negative 2. Let me put that here. Oh, I didn't write the other part. The slope is 2. Why did I put in? <laughs> and that's it. That's it. Number 11, 2.7.1. Okay. All right. So that, that's number 11. You know, what we did here was we looked to see what the difference was between sequential values, right? And from that, from that, we knew what the slope was, 2. I went to see what the initial value. When x is 0, we have our initial value of negative 2. That's our b value. So I just put it there in the b value position. All right. Thumbs up, sideways, down? What do you think? Does it make a little more, more sense? Is it looking here? Is that one of the issues? Not sure where to look. Just remember, you look where the numbers are sequential. We're going to have another example like that, I think. So I'll let somebody else uh, pick another number, and then we'll try that one, see how we're doing. And this day flies by. We only have like 18 minutes left. So let's get it. What's another number? What do we need to look at? Number 12, very good. Okay, so number 12. Let me put this over here. There we go. Okay, so number 12. Number 12 has a slightly different situation. Number 12 is x and y. We're going to make three columns so we could find our m value. Negative 1, negative 8, negative 2, negative 13, 1, 2, 2, 7. Okay. First off, this isn't right. Why isn't that correct? Somebody tell me in the chat, why is this that I circle here not in the form that we can really use quite yet? Why? What's the reason why we can't use that order to find much information here? Not in order. Shouldn't it be positive to negative? It's not in order. It's backwards. Okay. So actually, we're always going from least to greatest. Least to greatest. Okay. So we know that because if this was zero, we'd expect it to be zero. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right? It goes up. So watch. I'm going to rewrite this. 
I'm going to put negative 2, negative 13 first, then negative 1, negative 8, then 1, 2, then 2, 7. You see? You see why that's better is because negative 2 is less than negative 1. It's underwater a whole nother foot. Negative 1 to 1, and then 1 to 2, these are helpful. So let's find, let's look at both of these segments. Because we're missing 0, we can't find our initial amount. But we're going to plug in what we can find and then probably have to use a point to find the other one. This is that whole level two. Okay. If you're not given the initial point where X is zero, you got to plug in a point and find your B value. So now when I look at this, now I have it set up where I can look and see, well, what is the difference between negative one and, and negative two here? Negative two to negative one, what happens? Negative eight minus negative 13. We're going to find that. And then from 1 to 2, we went 7. We went from 2 to 7. So we have 5. This becomes plus, so we end up with positive 5 again. And what we just found was our slope. I'm going to go up here and put 5. All right. So what we have left, though, is our B value. We weren't given X is 0, so we couldn't find what our initial amount is. Now, you could deductively reason. You could figure it out from, from just these numbers here, what 0 is. But let's assume we can't see that. I'm going to take this point, and I'm going to use it for this purpose of finding B. This point is just 1, 2. Okay, That's an X and a Y. So remember that all these points are part of the function we're creating. So plugging in a point will allow me to find what I don't know. I'll be able to find my B value. So watch what I'm going to do. For Y, I'm going to bring this down here. For Y, I'm going to plug in 2. 5 times X plus B. You see I plugged in 2 for Y because I'm using this point. I plugged in 1 for X. Okay. All right. Get this person in and think campus real quick. All right, Zach, wrong class. Right now it's period two. Somebody needs a schedule. <laughs> All right, where did my stuff go? There's that. There we go. Okay, so watch what I'm going to do here. I'm going to go ahead and work this out. 2 is equal to 5 plus B, minus 5, minus 5. B is negative 3. I'm going to put my negative 3 here. I'm going to rewrite it so it looks a little better. 5X minus 3. So really what I know is that if I had a value for 0 for X, I would end up with negative 3 for Y. Let's see if that makes sense. Negative 13 plus 5, negative 8, plus 5, negative 3, plus 5, 2, plus 5, 7. Yeah, it works all the way. So I know. I just kind of double checked right there and I got it. I got it. All right. How about another one? Let's do another one. Which one's next, guys? Uh, let's see. Go ahead and take a screenshot of this page. Let me get it set up right for you. Okay, go ahead and screenshot that. Okay, um, I have a request for 14 from this worksheet and then the sequence worksheet number 50. So let me do this one, number 14, first. Screenshot in three, two, one. Screenshot. All right, let's do it on the bottom of this page here. Let's save some paper. All right, 14 x, y, negative 1, 6, 2, negative 12, 4, negative 24, 6, negative 36. Okay, we don't have any sequential numbers here. 
We have nothing. Look, negative one, two, four, six. We don't have zero. We don't have, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're going to, have to be a little tricky here because if this is a linear equation, which we're told it is, then the increment between two and four should be the same between four and six. If I find that increment, I'll be able to figure out and deduce, well, what y value goes with one? What y value goes with, um, wait, two, three, four, five, wait, that's why. <laughs> what y value goes with three? What y value goes with five? I'll be able to figure those out because I'll know how much you change between two and four. Okay, so I'll just cut that in half once I get it. So let's see, negative 24 minus negative 12. We end up plussing it, and we end up with negative 12. Negative 36 minus negative 24. We end up plussing it, adding it, we get negative 12. Okay, so I know that between 2 and 4, between 2 and 4 is negative 12. Between 4 and 6 is negative 12. So if I'm just looking to see, well, how much then to go between 12, or sorry, 2 and 3? How far to go between 2 and 3? If it was negative 12 to go two spaces, then this is going to be negative 6. Between 4 and 5 is going to be negative 6. You see, we got to deduce that a little bit. This is the hard problem. Hard problem. So what I just deduced here is that my slope My slope is really negative 6 between each term. Between each value for x is negative 6. So I know it's negative 6. Okay. Now you could deduce your way, okay, from 2 you can go and add 6 to go down. Or you go from negative 1 and subtract 6. You'll be able to get to, you know, know what 0 is. But I say we just plug in an easy point. Let's plug in, let's plug in that point. So I'm going to take negative 1, 6, x and y. I'm going to plug it in right here. 6, negative 6, negative 1, plus b. 6 equals positive 6 plus b. Minus 6, minus 6. b is 0. So when I go back up here, I know this b value is 0. So I'm going to write my final answer here is y is equal to negative 6x plus 0. I can leave that out. All right, go ahead and screenshot it. We are running out of time, so I'll push the pace a little. We're going to bounce over to the uh, sequence worksheet and look at number 50. Okay, so this is the one that, this one is due today, actually. Let's see. That's not what I want. That's what I want. Number 50. Man, I gave you 50 problems? Just kidding. Never. All right. Number 50 in the sequence worksheet. So what they do is they gave you the first term. They gave you the common ratio. Uh, let's see. Find the explicit formula and the uh, how many terms the the three terms in the sequence after the last one given i guess the last one given was this so we got to find the first four terms we know this is negative two all right so when i look at this explicit formula for this guy let's bring it back up we are for this talking about geometric sequences so my explicit formula is this guy. A sub n is equal to a sub 1 times r n minus 1. Okay. So let's see. We already know everything for this. Negative 2, 4, n minus 1. And I think for this we're just going to have to find a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4. But here's the thing, you can, you know, they asked us to find this, so great, that's helpful. But I think we can find, I think we can find the, um, 
we can find the next three terms just by using what we know about our common ratio. Because remember, all of this is going to be multiplied by something to get to the next one. Okay? So somebody in the chat, tell me what terms are going to end up going here. What terms are going to end up going here? We know our R value. You could plug it in. You know, you could plug in 2, 2, and then work it out. Plug in 3, 3, plug it out, 4, 4. But we don't really have to do that. We know that our R value, common ratio is 4. So times 4, times 4, times 4. That'll get it to us too. Nice. Okay, good. Uh, Jackman says negative 8. That doesn't sound good to me. Negative 32. Sounds good. Negative 128. All negatives because we only multiply by a positive, so it didn't change it. So here are my terms that were requested and my explicit formula. Okay. All right, Deanna, you're just early for the next class, I guess. We're in period two right now. You're in period not two. All right, save that. Okay, that is number fifty. Oh, sorry. This is this is number fifty. And this was in the, what do we call it? This is the M1 sequence review. Number 50. Okay, let's see. We got four more minutes. I probably have time for one more problem. Anybody want to request a problem? Either more sequences or going back to the tables. What you think, anybody? Last chance, we got through quite a bit. Okay, we're gonna look in the sequences. Number 45 came up first, so let me see if I could do both. Let's see, 45 in the sequence. Okay, we have a sub one is 35. We have d is equal to negative 20. This is an arithmetic sequence. Um, let me see, find the explicit formula and the three terms after. So I know we have 35, same problem, but it's arithmetic, okay? So arithmetic sequence, remember, we're looking at the explicit formula. We're gonna have a sub n is equal to a sub one plus n minus one times d. We know the values, they already told us. How nice is that? So I know that my common difference is negative 20. So again, we're gonna set this up and then just use the common difference to find our values n minus 1 times negative 20. a sub n is equal to 35 minus 20n plus 20. a sub n is equal to negative 20n um, plus 55. All right, so there's our explicit formula. Yeah. The thing is, though, this is the information we really need because to find our next terms, we have to multiply by, excuse me, we need to um, add a negative 20 to each of these because it's arithmetic. Okay? It's arithmetic. So we have to keep that in mind. We have to um, keep in mind what kind, of, what kind of function we're dealing with. So what's what I'm going to do? I'm going to combine here. I'm going to add a negative 20. Think of it as adding. That's always going to be easier. We're going to add a negative 20. So here we get down to 15. Here we get negative 5. Here we get negative 25. So we have our four terms and we've got our explicit formula. So that is good for that one. No, 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 no. All right, guys, take a screenshot real quick of these. Take a screenshot really quick. Actually, let me just move it down a little bit. All right, screenshot. Screenshot in three, two, one. I'm going to do this last one kind of fast forward, okay? I'm going to look at number 11, excuse me, number 13 on 271. That was the next one that was in the chat. Didn't I do 13? Or is that in another class? It was in the other class. All right, so look, we have 13 in 271 worksheet. All right, x, y, 4, 8, 5, 9, 8, 12, 
uh, 10, 14. Okay, they're in order, but we're missing some. I'm going to look here. I'm going to look here because those are sequential. So make my next column for my slope. 9 minus 8 is 1. Okay, and let's just see if this would work. If I'm at 5, 9, if I add 1, it's going to be 6, 10. 7, 11. 8, 12. That looks like it works. Then it would be 9, 13. 10, 14. Okay, so hey, I just figured out my slope is m. Uh, my slope is 1. The reason I could figure that out is because I found it between 4 and 5, and then I just double checked. It would be 6, 10. It would be um, 7, um, 7, 11, 8, 12, 9, 13, 10, 14. It makes sense. It works. So we get 1x plus b. We don't have a y value to plug in for b, so I'm going to pick an easiest point to work with. i pick 4, 8, x and y. I'm going to plug in what I know. This is going quick, so you'll have to probably review this in uh, the video I post later. B is 4. Look, I'm just going to rewrite it, and I'm done. 1x, so I'm just going to write x, plus 4. Yeah. All right. Oh, man, it's time to go. I wish I could do number 11, too. Hmm. I'm going to go for it. All right, I'll give you a screenshot of this after. Let's do 11 quickly. Uh, X, Y. I can do this in a minute. Negative 2, 2, 2, 3, 4, 4, 6. You won't be able to keep up, guys. It's going to be too quick. Uh, 4 minus 2, 2. 6 minus 4, 2. I know that my slope is 2, okay, because I went through my sequential numbers. I also know that my initial amount is negative 2. So I can rewrite this. Man, that was really quick. To rewrite this, plug it in my M, plug it in my B. When X is 0, we're at our initial amount, so I have negative 2 for my initial value. I have slope of 2 because I looked at my sequential X values and found the difference was 2. So Y is equal to 2X minus 2. Oh my God, did I do that in one minute? Dang, pat on the back. Oh, I already did number th 11 here. Ah, oh, Lizette, did I, did I do it twice for you? <laughs> yeah, it was the first one we did. Okay. All right, well, we started and ended with the same one, so maybe that's good. <laughs> All right, I'm going to stop share. All right, actually, I'm going to give you a screenshot chance. All right, screenshot it. Three, two, 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 one, 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 and we're good. All right, guys, I know today flies by. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let you scurry on out of here. So I'll see you uh, I'll see you on Wednesday, okay? All right. Have a good day. All right. Take care. Sure. Um I'm confused. I I asked for the number 50 and number 45, but when you showed the example, um the explicit formulas were different, and I don't understand how you would go from R to D. Got it. Um, let's see. Take a screenshot of this. Because the main thing is with this, we have to distinguish between it being um, exponential or it being linear. And that's the main thing. The reason that they're different is that one of the questions, I think 50... It looks like 50 was um, exponential because it gave you a common ratio. It gave you an R value. 45 was linear because it gave us a common difference. It gave us a D value. So the reasons why I use different explicit formulas is because one was an arithmetic and one was an explicit. So that's really important to, and I think you might have missed this one, but take a screenshot of these. Because first is distinguishing, are we adding a value? And when we add it, we're adding, we're adding our D value, our common difference. If it's geometric, we're multiplying. And in that case, we have a common ratio. The multiplication is, is uh, how much do you multiply to go between terms. Okay, This is right when you had missed a couple classes. So if you think we should meet at the 9 a.m. to 9.30 kind of little spot, uh, we can do a tutoring session if you like. Oh, I think I understand. Thank you. Oh, okay. Excellent. All right. Yeah, well, yeah. After, I just didn't understand in the worksheet. 
Oh, okay. Okay, perfect. All right, then probably good to go then. Have a nice day. Hey, you too. All right, guys, I, uh, I'm going to close and open up again so that I have the meetings broken up. Okay? Come on back. Yeah, bartender, can I get a Hennessy on the rocks and uh, Long Island iced tea? Thank right. you. Did I tell you this club was Yeah, coming? you wasn't lying, kid. It's Look at this. They all over the place. Kid. Yeah, one second, hun. Slow down. Slow Yo, James, get off me. Yo, back off, Hi, you, Would you slow back, down, Yo, down? back off, shorty. Like, everyone was chasing my fine ass. But when the layer walked in, the whole place went bananas. I'm paying for most of my perks. And they offering the hun free crystal the works. Not to mention smell good and look dope. I brought me a bottle so I wouldn't look broke. Step like a big Willie Bourgeois player. Sign this thousand dollar bill for me to